Hello friends, this video on principles of inheritance part 8 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. About the phenotype and the genotype. So this, this is quite closely related to the concept of alleles. So let us see what are they. So let us see what is a phenotype and what is a genotype. Now these are very basic terms which are used in genetics because as we go ahead you will see we will be continuously using phenotypes and genotypes. So let us understand what is a phenotype, what is a genotype. Now as the name suggests pheno and geno. Geno is something related to gene and pheno, the word pheno itself means to show. So whatever is seen that is basically phenotype. And whatever is its genetic uh, composition, that is the genotype. So roughly that is the meaning of these two terms. Now let us take some examples. When we say phenotype, it is the organism's observed properties. For example, let us consider the same pea plant. We say that the plant is tall. So tall is its phenotype. How do we know it is tall? Because it appears to be tall. So it is showing itself as tall. That is why it is tall. Similarly, if we say a plant is dwarf, it, it is being displayed like that. It is something which is observable. So tall and dwarf are the phenotypes of the plant. Right? Whereas if we talk about genotype, it means the genetic behavior, I mean the genetic composition rather. So it is the organism's genetic information. Now when we talk about a plant which is tall, so tall is its phenotype. So what is the genotype of a tall plant? The genotype is basically the composition of the gene. So which is the gene? The gene which represents its height. So how does the gene look like? So for this plant, for a tall plant, its genotype will be capital T, capital T. So if we say that if genotype of a plant is capital T, capital T, that means it has taken capital T, that is tall trait from its father, tall trait from its mother, so it is tall. So tall is the phenotype and the genotype is capital T, capital T. Now it, it, the genotype can also be capital T, small t, that means it has taken a tall trait from father but a a uh, dwarf trait from mother. So capital T small t will be the genotype. Similarly, if you talk about a dwarf plant, so for the dwarf is the phenotype, but the genotype is small t small t. So this is the genotype. And what is the phenotype? The plant is dwarf. That is the phenotype. So phenotype is something which is observable, which is its observable property. But when you talk about its genetic uh, consti constitution, that is the genotype. So if you take examples, so tall, dwarf, for in case of a plant, they are the phenotypes. Similarly, if you talk about the seeds of the pea plant, round seed, wrinkled seed, so they are the phenotypes because that is how the seed appears to be. If the seed is round in shape, it is a round seed. So that is the phenotype. But if what would be the genotype for a round seed or a wrinkled seed? So the genotype for a round seed can be capital R, capital R, that is it has inherited round from both the parents. It can be capital R, small r and for wrinkled it, it can be small r, small r. So these are the genotypes and these are the phenotypes. So now let us see what are homozygous and heterozygous genotypes. So again you we got homo hetero. So by now we know homologous heterologous chromosomes. We also know homozygous and heterozygous organisms. Now we will see homozygous and heterozygous genotypes. They are basically the same. So what are homozygous genotypes? Where both the alleles are identical. So these organisms with homozygous genotype, they are also called as homozygous organisms. So both mean the same. So if you talk about heterozygous, they will have different alleles for the same gene. So basically this means that if the organism inherits the same trait, exactly identical trait from both the parents, then that organism is going to be a homozygous. So examples, so capital T, capital T, small t, small t, they are all homozygous because they have both the alleles exactly identical to each other. But here in this case, if you see, the alleles are not identical to each other. So these are heterozygous uh, genotype. Now the question is, what would be the phenotype for these? Now for phenotype for these is going to be tall. Phenotype for this is going to be dwarf. Phenotype for this is going to be round seed. 
phenotype for this is going to be wrinkled seed. Right? Now, if I ask you the same thing for a heterozygous genotype, that what is going to be the phenotype for this? Now, that sometimes becomes confusing because you don't know which trait will get expressed. So, the thing that is to be remembered is that it is always decided by which one is dominant. So, whichever alley is dominant, that will get expressed. So, in this case, capital T is dominant, so it will be expressed. So, the plant will be tall. Similarly, in this case, round is dominant, so the plant, uh, so the seed will be round. So, if it is capital R, small r, so basically the expressed trait is round. So, the phenotype is going to be round and small r is going to be a hidden trait. We will talk about dominance in more detail. So, that exactly that is what has been discussed here. What would be the phenotype for genotype capital T, small t? So, here if you see, as I mentioned just now, that this is capital T, capital T because it is tall. This is small t, small t because it is short. But when it is capital T, small t, what will happen? We have to check which is dominant. Now, here in this case, capital T is dominant. So, therefore, capital T small t's phenotype is going to be tall. Now, with this idea on the phenotype and genotype, let us recall Mendel's experiment. Let us try to understand the same experiments using these, these small, small concepts, like using the phenotypes and genotypes. Let us see what was actually happening in Mendel's experiment. So, what was Mendel's first experiment? He took <coughs> tall plants, crossed them with dwarf plants. And he found that all the F1 generation were tall plants. So this is what he found, right? So this was in his parental generation. So this was the parental generation. And this one, this was his F1 generation, right? So now let us try to see the genotype and phenotypes of all these plants. Now as per Mendel, this was a tall plant. This was a dwarf plant. So these are the phenotypes. So, what he observed that the phenotypes of all the F1 generation were tall. They were all tall. Let us try to write or let us try to see what were their genotypes. Now, as I mentioned before also that before crossing the plants, Mendel made sure that he self-pollinated each type of plants over a couple of generations so that they are purebred. That means that this plant is being formed, this sample of plant is being formed only by self-pollination of tall plants. So there is no question of having any hidden dwarf trait in this plant. So this plant is going to be homozygous tall. That means capital T, capital T. So it is going to be pure tall. So the genotype is going to be capital T, capital T. What is going to be the genotype for the dwarf plant? Again, this is going to be purely dwarf. So only small t, small t. Now, these two were crossed with each other. Now, what will happen when these two were crossed with each other? So, that is what we have to see. Now, this tall plant has two alleles, T and T. This dwarf plant also has two alleles, T and T. So, what all can this tall plant contribute from its side? It can only contribute capital T or capital T. So, basically, it has just one option of contributing a capital T. Similarly, what can this dwarf plant contribute? It can contribute a small t or a small t because that is all it has. Right? So, now what can happen? Now, if any of these combine with any of these, what will happen? The net result is always going to be capital T, small t. Capital T, small t. Capital T, small t. So, everywhere you are going to get, the only possibility that you will get if a, a homozygous tall is crossed with a homozygous dwarf, you will only get heterozygous. Right? So, all these are going to be heterozygous. And in these heterozygous, we saw that capital T is dominant over small t and that is why their phenotype is tall. So now you understood that in the F1 generation, the plants appear to be tall because their phenotype is tall. But when you look at their genotypes, you get to see that there is a dwarf trait also present in them. But it is just that because it is not dominant, so it is being hidden in the F1 generation. Right? So here, capital T is expressed and small t is hidden. So small t is not expressed in F1 generation. Now, what happens in the later half of the same experiment? So, in the second half, what he does? 
he takes and self pollinate the f1 plants so what were the f1 plants the f1 plants phenotype were tall they were all tall and what was their genotype their genotype was capital t small t so right now these plants are the f1 plants the plants which were produced in the f1 generation now they are self pollinated so when i say self pollinated basically it is getting pollinated within the same plant so you can say it is a cross between two exactly identical plants right that is self pollination so what was the result f2 generation was formed so this is f2 generation and in f2 generation it was observed that most of the plants were again tall but some dwarf plants were also observed so dwarf plants was observed here that this dwarf plant came from this hidden little tree so this is from where this plant came up so let us see what would have happened if these two were crossed now in this case this this can these has two alleles one is capital t one is small t so it can contribute either it can contribute a capital t or it can contribute a small t so when i say contribute what i am trying to say is basically the gametes it, it is like sex cross pollination is nothing but sexual reproduction between father and mother it is like that so the father has to give sperm the mother has to give the egg so basically they have to give gametes so this tall plant can give either a capital t or a small t so this this can also give a capital t or a small t now this capital t and these are the various possibilities that can happen so this can combine with this this can also combine with this this can combine with this or this can combine with this these are the various possibilities so what are the result of the possibilities capital t and capital t can form this again capital t small t then capital t small t and small t small t so these are the various possibilities that can be formed if two heterozygous tall plants are crossed right so these are the various possibilities now these are the genotypes so what is the phenotype for capital t capital t so phenotype for capital t capital t is going to be tall what is the phenotype for capital t small t so that is also going to be tall phenotype for capital t small t again is going to be tall because capital t is dominant over small t and what is going to be the phenotype for small t small t that is going to be dwarf because you don't have any capital t at all so it has to be dwarf now because of this this is how you observe it so when you look at the ratio if you talk about the f2 generation how do you find these are the phenotypes of f2 generation and these are the genotypes of f2 generation so now if i ask you to find out the phenotypic ratio and the genotypic ratio how do you find phenotypic ratio is basically the ratio between tall and dwarf so tall is to dwarf ratio is going to be 3 is to 1 because you have three tall plants for one dwarf plant so phenotypic ratio will be 3 is to 1 similarly if i ask you to find out the genotypic ratio so what will be the genotypic ratio here we will not talk in terms of tall and dwarf what are the various types of genotypes you have you have basically three types of genotypes one is capital t capital t one is capital t small t and one is small t small t but capital t capital t you have two so basically this will be capital t capital t is to capital t small t is to small t small t and this ratio is going to be 1 is to 2 is to 1 so these are the phenotypic and genotypic ratio of the f2 generation right so because of this we saw that 1/4 of the f2 generation was dwarf and the rest of them were tall so here we can see that for these three types of plants their phenotypes are all same but their genotypes are different and due to this heterozygous genotype one trait remains hidden for a particular generation but it gets expressed later in some later generation so this is how mendel's experiment was concluded so this is where mendel concluded quite a few things he concluded that he concluded this concept of phenotype genotype and he actually found out that how traits were being inherited now based on this experiment he gave quite a few rules of inheritance so we are going to talk about those rules now one by one thank you please 
please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.